If you ask me, all the best knockouts, whether we're talking about MMA, Muay Thai, or boxing, have come off of hand traps. There's just something beautiful about pulling and pinning an opponent's limb out of the way as you drive in a power punch or an elbow, whatever. Well, that's just Wing Chun. Wing Chun is the art of hand trapping. The problem is, they've been doing it wrong. So Wing Chun is a Kung Fu style. It's the parent of Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. Um, essentially what it is, it's the art of counterfighting by redirecting your opponent. So like, if we look at like boxing, when you throw your jab at me, typically I'm gonna parry and then come over the top of my punch. Yeah. If we look at karate, you throw your punch, I'm gonna do some kind of block, coming underneath it, whatever. Okay. Wing Chun, Jeet Kune Do as a whole, is about redirecting you and striking almost at the same time while putting you in a position where you can't even back. So, we practice it here. You're gonna feed me is a punch. This stance We're gonna start out squared right okay. now. I want you to throw your punch at me here. I'm gonna parry out the outside with my outside hand. Left hand's gonna come underneath here. Right hand's gonna re-trap at the elbow, and then left hand's gonna punch back at you. This right here is redirecting. You can see I do that right, it makes your shoulder turn. Yeah. Right, we're already getting in the position where you are offline. I'm straight, right Exactly. Now. This hand right here is serving to keep you from turning back at me. So you turn here, makes it really difficult for you to turn and hit me, right? So this would be like you throw your jab, that's just my parry, right? This is my insurance that you're not gonna come back and hit me again. So it goes right here, defend, Control, mm -hmm. now right here, I'm gonna pin you, I'm gonna take this hand, pin it to your body. Yeah. So I don't have to do these all necessarily at the same time, right? I could just go pin, or I could just go here. Any one of those works. We're doing all of them right now so yep. we can get the totality of the drill. So we come here, we block, we control, we pin, and now I'm free to strike. We practice like this, go ahead, so that I can go here and you can still practice. Now you're gonna do the exact same thing, here, control, pin, and punch. And I can do the same thing. Boom, bang, mm -hmm. boom, bang. So what's throwing you off is you're using your thumbs. Mm -hmm. You're trying to grab my hand, just slap it. Pretend right. you're in boxing mode, pretend you can't grab me. Oh, okay. okay, so I'm gonna punch you here. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, other hand, outside hand. Boom, yep, mm -hmm. pin, and boom. There you go. And then we just work through it. Ah, dang it. It's all right. It's all right. I throw over the top. It's all right. Go ahead, boom, boom, bang, boom, boom. There we go. And you can see, once we get in the rhythm here, it's really easy to fall than just being rhythmic. I don't even really necessarily have to look at Aaron to make this work because I know the timing of our drill. Now realistically, uh, this doesn't work this way, yeah. but it's about learning the sensitivity and learning how to work through the different parry, control, block, and strike, that kind of stuff. So I personally think styles like Wing Chun, Jeet Kune Do, even Kali to a degree, spend too much time worrying about this part of the drill because that's more or less natural. You just, you just learned it and you're already picking it up. Yeah. I think the most important part is getting the footwork moving. Getting yourself offline in a position where you can strike. Now, the simplest way to do it, I think, is to get off this lead side, but you could also, let's see, like a jab cross. Boom, boom. Get off this way, same idea. It's easier for you to turn to face me. Yeah, I'm mean, gonna just throw it. Exactly. But if I can get here, but throw it, boom, boom, boom bang. I'm gonna get the drop first because yep. I, I'm already a step ahead of you. Footwork, more important than handwork. But this isn't a footwork video, this is a Wing Chun video, so we're gonna use our hands. So I can, off of your jab, step out this way and come with the counter cross, but I wanna get you in a position where you can't hit me back. So when you throw your jab, I'm gonna take this hand and I personally like getting that pull here. So you come in, car crash into my right hand. I'm, I'm gonna get yelled at for this because we should be going parry with the outside hand to counter with the right side hand. But the reason I'm gonna parry with the inside hand is because I'm getting off at this angle. When I move this way, I don't need to defend with this hand because he's not gonna hit me with the right hand. His cross isn't coming. Now if I'm standing in front of him, which we've talked about before, then yeah, he sees me cross parry, there comes that right hand. He can throw it from over here, he can definitely turn his hip into it, yeah. but if I've got the drop on him, there's my right hand. If we drill, like this, go ahead, throw your jab. I'm already a step behind it. I can't move fast. I can't move my whole body weight faster than you can move your hand. Mm -hmm. So really what I need to be doing is I need to be playing at range where you have to enter my range and hit me yep. and get you circling. So we're here. Maybe I've hit like a teep, 
maybe I'm hitting you with a long jab, I'm keeping you away, and you start chasing, I start circling away, when that jab comes, there's my counter. I'm already a step ahead of you, knowing that I'm gonna need to get that hand away from you. So when I see it, I was waiting for it. The problem I see with a lot of Wing Chun fighters is that they're constantly hunting for things rather than accepting what their opponent's already giving them. Mm -hmm. Timing. Timing is an important one. Mm -hmm. Because if I have you right here, I have both my hips pointing at you, I know this right hand is loaded, ready to come after you, I have a split second of time before you learn that. Yeah. If you're smart, when we're here, you're gonna do one of two things. You're gonna either swing that hip towards me, your right hip towards me, boom, taking away, now you've created the angle, or, come back to me, you're gonna step back this way. When you learn Wing Chun for movies, it's like we come here, you throw your jab, and I go, ha ha, boom. Yeah. But, like we talked about earlier, if I slap your hand down, it's coming right back up, right? It's either gonna come to the face of that tank hook, right, or it's just coming back. right back up, right? So I need to be able to go, now let's go ahead and throw your jab, one, two, three, but I need to be able to go one, two, right? Boom, boom. If, you're, if you've got a good tight guard, I can also, boom. Yep. That's one of my favorite traps. Taking this hand here, boom, hit that liver. Now, this position that I'm ending up here, that's Wing Chun too. This is called a Bong Sao block. Oh, and let me see your Philly shell. As cool as you want to make it. Cool, perfect. That's the Philly shell. And from right here, your shoulder is going to defend from my right side. Your left hand is going to defend from my straight crotchets, right? Yep. What I'd like for you to do is open up your shell a little bit, and when I punch, give me that Mayweather block. So basically what we're going to do is as the punch comes in, think about taking your fingers and pointing them at your opponent, tilting your elbow up like this. Uh -huh. And what you're wanting is that arm to skid over the top of your forearm. Oh. So I'm here, I throw my punch, Boom. Yeah, not like that. And instead of it coming up, your arm is up to begin with. Just here. And turn with it. Yeah. So we're here. Boom. Yeah. Again, we're here. Bang. Yes. Now come back with that cross hook. Boom. Boom. Yeah. Ah. Put that cross on my shoulder. Go ahead and throw it. I right. throw it wild. Boom. Boom. Yeah. One more again. Boom. 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 Yes. Interesting. I know this is kind of probably an older martial art, so it's crazy how like this is like the, you're, I'm seeing this as like the foundation for a lot of strength and system. That's where I come from with it. That like when we practice it, like when it's like this mm -hmm. here, it's very hard to see how that actually applies to anything. Yes. But when we're like this, yeah, doing this, we're like, okay, I can. So if we go to regular fighting, mm -hmm. the same kind of applies. Different stance. Different stance. But I'm gonna let's say I come here, mm -hmm. right? Go for it. Boom. It still works. I think this is a lot easier to do this than yes, exactly right here. Because here we don't have torque. Yeah, right. But here we isolate what we're working on. Mm -hmm. We can isolate coming in here, coming here, that. Long story short, to uh, properly understand how to use these things, you gotta understand the three times that are best to attack somebody. For me, the best time to counterattack somebody is actually before they hit you. If I'm here with you, this is what our, this is what our inside fold across is, right? Mm -hmm. Because if I'm here and I move this way, I've already countered you, you just don't know it yet. Yeah. I'm waiting for that jab and when the jab comes in, boom, that's there. Right? I'm just letting you think you're ahead of me, but I've already hunted that jab. The second best time to hit somebody is as they're hitting you. The simplest way to do it, simplest way to demonstrate it, is throw your punch at me, boom. I know you're exposing your rib, so I'm falling out to the open side, there's my counter. Or you throw your cross, boom, there's my kick. Right? I know it's coming out, so I intercept it. The worst time, and the way that most people try to use Wing Chun, is after they've hit you. Mm -hmm. Now, they might not have actually like come in and hit you, but once their attack is done, it's too late. Yeah. This is what we talked about a minute ago, right? If they have a perfect jab that you haven't disrupted at all, you try to catch it as a fool's, fool's errand, right? Fool's errand. If I'm here and my jab comes back, and you try to trap it, yep. right? Or worse still, this is what happens to every amateur Wing Chun fighter on the internet. You try to trap my jab, boom. You try to trap my jab, you try to trap my jab, yeah. right? Another concept of Wing Chun, is what they call the sticky hands mentality. Um, really simply, what it is, I'm gonna put my hand here. Wherever my hand goes, I want you to stick to it. Okay, right. that's it, nice and easy. The easier your hand is, the more loose and less muscle you use, the easier it is to work. So this is long range clenching, right? Yeah. You right now have double inside bicep control. I have Perfect. 
for the sake of just simplicity, normally they go one in, one out, just so that we can both work. Oh, okay. For simplicity's sake, let's work on this hand right here. Mm -hmm. Work there. This hand can kind of passively move, but this hand really the one that's working. I'm on the outside. I'm trying to get inside here. You're trying to keep me from doing that. Mm -hmm. Right there, boom, right in the boom. And now I'm gonna do the same thing here. You're on the outside trying to work your way in. Right there, good. But let's take that back a step. Instead of me actively giving you resistance, I'm gonna be here. Okay. And I want you to take everything we just did in that sticky hands drill to pull my hands away from me and hit me. Okay. I'm not gonna do anything to you. I'm just gonna be here and I want you to find targets. Okay, go for it. So I'm pulling the hands. Yep. Boom. That one. And hey, do that. Yep. Trying to see if I get. So here, push up, crashing into me. So if we go straight line to straight line, mm -hmm. this is just rhinos, right? Yeah, rhinos the horn. I'm gonna take this here. Oh, uh, okay. okay. Right? Up and down, up and down, no one's gonna win that one. Yeah. Change the angle, boom. Okay. So if I'm here and you wanna do that bong style block, you can just wing it, boom. Yep. Wing chun it. Wing chun it. There's a thing called a subsystem. Mm -hmm. There's systems. I think boxing, Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu, Sambo, those are systems. Those are methods of delivering strikes or delivering attacks. Mm -hmm. Wing Chun is a subsystem. It exists within those systems. You have to have a base first, yeah. and then you can specialize in being a trapper, in being a center line theory master, whatever. You can not do that. You can also focus on ripping punches or doing kicks yeah. or sweeps, whatever. You can be a clinch master. There's plenty, there are plenty of subsystems within things, and we can talk about them later, but Wing Chun for me is a subsystem that if you learn how to properly box, mm -hmm make you so much better. Yeah. And I think like the problem is in movies, they do try to make it look so beautiful. Yeah. And as like actual martial artists, we know what's wrong. Like yeah. standing like this. Yeah. So we don't take it seriously. But if I'm sparring, I'm going to do this. Like he does a something. I'm doing that. Yeah. I'm following like, I mean, and that's Wing Chun. I personally want to eventually do the, <laughs> <laughs> what I've learned. If you do Wing Chun, right. If you get someone here and you, Boom, um, done. Yeah, you don't need to throw more because that's, uh, that's I mean, they're, yeah, they're knocked out. So, Wing Chun, do it. And subscribe. <laughs>